Good afternoon, everyone. Apologies here, getting our screen shares up and everything. Will, would you find that pre-submitted question in the channel and post it into the chat for me? You got it. I appreciate that, sir. Hey, everyone, you got Will here. Um, we have one pre-submitted question. Uh, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to find that right at the current moment. As always, you can just use raise hand, um, uh, ask in chat or ask in QA in the Q&A section, and we will get to you. Feel free to use raise hand if you'd just like to ask your question verbally. No need to try to type it out on today's call. It's been a, probably be another slow day given the holiday week here in the States. Uh, as a note, we're also not, we're gonna be doing a temporary pause on Lunch and Learns the next two weeks after this week um, to give our team some time to focus on their families. Is that, does it say who that's from? Yeah, it's from Alex. It is from Alex. You know what? I read that and I thought it might be from Alex. All right. Let's see if oh, there's Alex. So anyone, but there's kind of a lengthy question here from Alex. It looks like Kirsten's in. I'm going to make you, is that our Kirsten? I'm assuming it is. Yeah, I'm going to let ours. you be a panelist. So here's a question from Alex, which is quite lengthy. So before I jump into that, um, just, oh, let me try. I wanna just give anyone else a, 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 an opportunity to ask anything. Okay, can I not control copy from Slack? Come on. Oh, okay, I can't. Yeah, I couldn't either. Slack is actually not letting me control copy. Um, seriously? What in the heck? Oh, there it's, it is. It's I, my I put it into Notepad++. It's too long. Is it too long? All right. Um, I'm just going to read this, <laughs> this question out loud. Um, let me see. Let me just try just the steps. Oh, you got it in there? There we go. Yeah. This All is right, only going to put some list. Yeah, there you go. That's the length, some silly length limitation in Zoom. All right, so here's a question. I'd like to receive some guidance on how to build an application that would have a vertical main menu visible in the user's landing page and all subsequent pages they may navigate to. What the application does is not very important. I just want to hear ideas for how to build a vertical main menu with a series of options. As with most ver modern vertical main menus, I'd like this one to be collapsible, leaving only the icons of the options and expandable when clicking the top icon. Menu items should be programmable. The menu options should include tooltips, especially when collapsed. Visibility of these options should be role driven. Oof, options should be shown with no spaces left between them if there's an option that's not visible. Uh, I should be able to place a separator line between options to group them. Some options may end up submenus. Clicking on an option may either run a flow or show another page. Maybe what I'm asking is how to build a framework for an application. I look through the documentation. Some of the examples you provide is the quick apps in the forum, but I cannot find anything about this. Considering it's a very common pattern, is it worth having a bit more guidance on doing this? Quite the request here, Alex. Don't um, don't hold back on the week of Christmas. Yeah, you know what? Uh, sorry, first of all, thank you for taking it. Um, I know that it's long and probably cannot be built, you know, the, the way you guys do this thing so quickly. Uh, and Let's there see. might be other questions uh, so I'm more than happy to be left for the end of the the viral uh, and uh, take other questions from other people if necessary, okay? Uh, yeah, I don't see, if anyone has any other questions, please let us know. Otherwise, we're just going to jump into this. I don't see any raised hands or questions being asked. And Alex is trying his hardest to engage my, like, desire to prove, to prove you wrong that I can do this. Um, <laughs> 
So is selective update going to update? Is selective update going to update if value is null? If yes, then what is the best practice to not update if value is null, empty, or not present at all in API request? Uh, okay. So Vitaly, you're passing data from like inputs to a flow via and call via API to a selective update step. Say you have 10 properties and you're passing all 10 of those properties um, into the selective update step, but you want to ignore it if it's null. Yes, so the purpose of that is to kind of create a generic update uh, API, but uh, in some cases they will pass a couple of fields in other cases and mm -hmm. other fields. And if they're not present or at least now, instead of creating like 100 steps to decide. I don't think there's a way for you to do this today that's not a mess of steps on in a flow. Okay. Because like... Hmm. My first thought was a converter flow on the input to the selective update step, but that yeah. still wants to pass something out, right? Um, I can pull all the uh, old data, I guess, and see if new data is null or empty and reuse the old one. You might just think of, could, maybe you think about this as like a data pairs thing. I don't know where how you get to the save step, but look at it as data pairs. Because mm -hmm. then you could look at the property and check to see if it's null. But then how do you pass it into something that's doing a save? I yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know of an easy way to do that. Um hmm. Because like, say if you have five pro, you have four properties. And so how many, you have to have like, you want to, first you check like if property A is null. And if it's not null, you check if property B is null. And is, if they're not, if all four are not null, then you go to the selective update step where they're all passed in, right? If only property four is not null, you go to the one that only has three selective input inputs, right? Like, yeah. uh, God, that's terrible. I don't know of another way to do that right now. You shouldn't have to do that. That's for sure. But I don't know what the alternative would be. Okay. Alex uh, is saying, I guess, but I think the question is, Alex, there, like, and feel free to speak, is I think the difference is if you leave it alone versus pass a null in, like ignoring a property on selective update ignores it. Or maybe there's a maybe you need a property called treat null as ignore or something. Maybe that's kind of what you're asking for, Vitaly. Like some kind of property that will allow you to say any null it please ignore any nulls. Uh maybe. Because you want if there's a value you want to update it which means you have to map it, right? But uh, we don't have dynamic mapping in decisions, right? Mm -mm. No. Mm. Yeah, I guess I, I, I'm, I'm gonna pull the old information on the entity and then uh, just do a converter on each field, say if it's null or empty or not present, mm -hmm. just reuse the old one. Yeah, I think we need a property on a selective update step, treat null as um as ignore. I think that will do what you want, because then you just have a single selective update step, right? Yep. That's a special one. Yeah, advanced. Specify timeout. Outcome. Oh, that's like a special one. Let's see. User defined database structure selective update. I don't know why that's not searching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, update relationships, business metric data, nothing. Yeah. What does update relationships do? Uh, it should, it, 
update data in like related tables as well. I'm actually not entirely sure what this does. Do we have that in the doc site? Well, the database structure relationships. Data structure relationships, relationships, dependencies overview. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one, brother. I don't know. Update really. Let me let me search in Slack internally really quick. Hmm. Oh, here's a question with no answer. Yeah, uh, let me get back to you on that one, Vitaly. I don't know. I'll we'll have to find out. Will, can you figure out? Um, can you help me figure out what that is, please? Sure thing. I thought we were supposed to have a bunch of training team members. Oh, we've got Greg here. There you go. All right. Let, all right. Uh, let me get back to you on that, Vitaly. I don't know. I should know the answer to that, though. Okay. I, th I, I, think, it, I think it's has to do with, like, dependent data types or nested data types in some way. Um, but I'm not entirely certain. Like if you, um, I think if you delete this thing, it gets, it marks it deleted somewhere else, something like that. Uh, folks, may I chime in? Yeah, yeah, please. I just, uh, I had a flow that I, I was able to uh, utilize and I, um, I passed a null on a selective update Mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't do anything on, on the record. Okay, so it did not change the original value of the record when I passed the null. Oh, great. Okay, that may answer VT's question. Yeah. Hope, I don't know whether, by the way, I hope that it's the same if I program the step to pass an all as to receive an all from a flow, which is, I believe, your use case, VT. But um, I did not have a way of passing a null from the flow, but I just forced it, forced the null in the selective update uh, configuration step in the step itself. Does that make sense? What I said? Mm -hmm. Yep, sure. I just need to test if uh, in the API call if uh, that's not present at all. So kind of like a GraphQL style. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Good. Good check. All right, uh, let's get to your question here. I think so. You don't like you don't want to use the folder tree. The folder tree doesn't fit your requirement here, right? No, because the folder tree shows, you know, this tree, the one that you're showing here. Mm -hmm. This is for an application X that may have, you know, a home, you know, a, I don't know, directory, uh, whatever options you might have, you know, orders, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay reports, administration, the typical stuff that you might have in a, might have in an application. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, wait, you can create folders for all of those things. And then the users only see what they have permissions to. The folder tree itself is permission based. Maybe we'd spend a moment trying to figure out why the folder tree isn't sufficient for what you want. Mm -hmm. So here, for example, like let's build, so let's just do create, you know, admin, right, and documents or something. And now if I come in as a user and I only have access to these two, I see admin and documents. It's just folders, individual folders in the tree. Uh, sorry, can I... Um distract you for a second, Will. Sure. Uh, I told you before VT is incorrect. Uh, I had forgotten to save the, the flow, the changes that I made in my flow. But when I put a null in a variable, it just puts a null in the field. So it, it's not, not true what I told you before. I apologize. My apologies. I misled you without intention. No, no worries. So his problem remains, okay. <laughs> so.
So, um, sorry, Alex. I'm so sorry. Just a moment. Apologies. No, 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 bro, no, bro. Take your time. Yeah. Anyways, what I was saying is like you can. Like, let's assume I have a user, and all they have access to is admin and documents. All they see is admin and documents in the folder tree. Mm -hmm. We can apply pages to those folders so that you can create custom views. You can create custom actions on those folders, so that you can have custom actions on those folders. What is it like? Are there is there something specific? Is it just that you don't want the, the you want something like Chrome equals off? So that you do need to create a completely custom like um UI. Um, <clears throat> I I don't have a, a a specific use case, you know, a, a, a requirements document to do this. I just wanted to learn how to create a vertical menu mm -hmm. to the left that could collapse or like that. Is it? It's probably oh, it's, uh, just. Uh, I uh, have done that and I did like a multi-layer menu and what I used just a tile HTML and the flow that basically builds uh, HTML dynamically so mm -hmm. I can control it and for each page uh, I use the uh, page ID uh, for the tile so I don't have to uh, build it over and over I just okay. registered a specific flow and I uh, did kind of like a menu of the colors and uh, links where that uh, item uh, will run. So you use, you use tiles to create the navigation? Yeah, and just, uh, yeah, just a flow that builds dynamic HTML. So you use an HTML tile? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's, that's going to be... Okay, uh, so let's, uh, here's, here's what... Uh, I'm going to rename this to... So here's an option. Let me create a full, I need to create a designer folder here. Sorry, just a moment. All right, so let's see, we need to create a page. And I saw this earlier today. Let's delete some of this stuff here. Let's delete. Okay. So what we can do here, I think what Vitaly's offering is let's edit our columns here. And let's do, say, a 300 wide column. There you go. All right. There's that. And then we can do like a tiles or a tile. So there's a couple of things. We could put simple tiles here where we can build a flow that does individual tiles. I think what Vitaly was saying is using like an HTML tile or just a tile set to HTML, I guess. Simple tile, right? Simple tile. Do you set its type in the flow? Yeah, you do set its type in the flow. Um, so you're doing this simple tile. Pick, let's create our flow, create a tile source flow. All right, here's our tile. And then what we can do is change it to, where do you set that at now? I thought there was, did we get rid of the HTML tile type? Lines, oh, that's the simple one, advanced. Hmm. All right, let me just pause and try to do, here, here's where I was going to go originally. Let me walk back. I'll come back to Vitaly's example. Mm -hmm. Here's, let me rename this. And this would be called use a user control and a form. And we'll create a designer folder. And then what we'll do is build a flow. And in that flow, we'll put a form. 
and we'll create a new form here. We'll do a regular form. And then what we're going to do is kind of create like a whole page view. So we're kind of do something similar to what we just did, which is made like a 200 wide column. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go to user controls and I'm going to find a user defined control and make this thing span. And then what I'll do is I'll come here and I'm going to uh, create a user control. And then what I'm going to do is make this vertical and I'm going to change its default layout to select me select surface. I'm going to change it from grid to vertical stack. There's that. And now what I'm going to do is put some, I guess, probably sub dialogue Button. flows. I don't know. What's the right thing to put here? Buttons. I'm sorry? Buttons. Well, we don't, we don't want to, I mean, we could, uh, it's, it's just user control, maybe open URL button. Yeah, let's just try, let's try that. And then what we can do, so here's some URLs. Let's see. I could come here. Let me put a folder underneath here. Uh, create folder. Test folder one. What I'm going to do is get the URL for test folder one and come back here and put it in here. Now, we can also just do this dynamically too, which is probably what you'd want to do. Um, I'm just going to do it statically That's in my first iteration at least. Here's a folder, test folder two. Same thing. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in here. Okay. Relative to base, yes, we would want to do that. Obviously, you'd want to do this in all the right ways. Uh, outcome scenario. So we'll put a button here, but we're probably just going to hide this button. So let's do behavior, not visible. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to go to my root folder here. I'm going to put that page that I just created as the page dashboard action here. Just call this details. Pick the page I just created, which is page. Oh, uh, nope. Hold on. I need to create a page. Sorry. Let me come back here. I don't have a page yet. So I'm going to create a page. On that page, I'm going to put a, I'm going to get rid of all the content and I'm going to find a flow run part and I'm going to make the whole thing one gigantic flow run part. I'm going to pick the flow I just created, which is flow one, I think. Now that I've done that, I'm going to save this. I'm going to apply that page to this folder here. Again, name it details. Now I can pick the page I just created. <laughs> Hopefully this is the right one. Those are all named page one. That's not ideal. All right, and here's now the a view. And so now what I have, now what you can start to see here is something like I'm creating a completely, uh, what's wrong with that? What's, uh, Sorry. There we go. So now I've got the bones of an of something that can actually do some navigate behaviors for me. If these are opening in new windows, you probably would not want that. But these can be event buttons or navigate buttons, whatever have you. And then you start, and so because I've done that as a user control, I can start creating, um, I can reuse that same navigation bar and start putting actual form experiences in the main area of the form.
I'll just pause there for a minute, see if this makes any sense where we're at right now. Alex, any questions yet? No, I'm trying to follow what you're doing. So imagine I'm just building my form to do something here. Well, or uh, I'm putting... I've sent you an email with the uh, screenshot of uh, the menu style that we have. <laughs> oh, cool. This looks nice. This is what Vitaly was able to accomplish through his proposed design. Mm, looks really nice. So this is an HTML tile. Where are you getting the flyout um, things from? So just in HTML, everything. So that's dynamic. You've got like uh, an on-click thing? On hover, but uh, that's dynamic so that that's a structure in decisions uh, that builds out that HTML and you can uh, register a flow with the menu config and that's gonna be picked up dynamically on the, uh, based on the uh, page ID. So you can just create a, like a simple flow and you, you have nice style to like uh, add a link, like uh, uh, icon, name it, whatever. and. Uh, create a child so it's like a nested structure so you can create as many children as you want and it will recursively build this uh, html nice so very little of this is done in the flow engine itself this is all html you're it just insert you just got a, a fancy flow on the back end that's like reading in like like um, uh, urls and or inserting urls into the html before it sends it to the tile source, to the tile? Uh, the Yeah, the flow builds the HTML itself. So all you need, you just need to register like a decisions uh, mm -hmm. structure and just, you, you, you can have, it's like structure within a structure. So you can have as many children as you want for that menu and it will expand. Automatically, I would say. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. It's very cool. And I won't be able to show you how to do that on today's call, Alex, but if no, you want. I, did not... <laughs> I, understand, I understand in essence what Vitaly's talking about, but there's a lot of HTML there, um, inline CSS, maybe even some inline JavaScript. Um, no, no. All no, that no, information no. together. No JavaScript at all, just no. HTML and CSS. Sure, whatever. Vitaly, would you like to connect offline and talk a little bit about that? Sure. I give you. I put my email in the chat if you want to connect with me. That sure. would be great. Yep. Shall we leave that conversation to there? Is this closer to what you're, what you're after here, Alex? Yeah, very much. Thank you so much. No, I know that this was not an easy question to answer in in a short period of time but uh, the the other approach that i had in mind um was that there is a there is a widget that you can put in a page um what is it called give me just one second it it looks like a, a folder tree that you can display um <clears throat> and if you have uh that folder you know, that, that tree, each of the folders becomes a page later and it's properly permissioned, uh, that might be another way of building that menu. Uh, does that make sense, Will, what I'm saying? Say that one more time for me. Yeah, let me let me find the, the widget that I'm talking about. Uh, just one sec. Ah. Like navigation or tile? tile tree maybe or tree view um, the tree view thank you mm -hmm. or a navigation navigate i think it's navigation tree that one yeah yeah so each of these folders has now the proper permissions excuse me by roles mm -hmm. uh, 
then the user will only see whatever the user is allowed to see. I will not have the ability to put horizontal separators between, between options, but the, the nesting should be doable because it would be a subfolder inside, you know, LNL 1113 might have some other subfolders and that's how you navigate, uh, how you do cascading menus. And uh, I think that the, I, I don't know whether it's collapsible though. And uh, each of these You things... have very little control over this, this the way this thing renders. Right. I think a lot of the complexities you mentioned in your comment or your question won't be captured by being able to do this. No. You think that it would work? Is that or that it will no work? that it won't that it won't do what you need it to do? Okay. okay. Yeah. This, this is very this much is... like a simple full representation of the folder tree. Oh. With a very I mean like um yeah. But it... If each of those folders contains uh, the appropriate actions for the user, maybe that would work. That was what I had, you know, in the back of my mind. Lacking a widget, a proper widget to do what I'm saying, right? That that might be a good uh, a good thing to have in the kit, right? Because yeah, I think I think Vitaly's solution is is could be appropriately defined as a widget. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, some custom HTML and CSS in the flow, in the tile source flow, doing all yeah. the heavy lifting for you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But like this but, in this thing, you don't actually, I don't think you can use actions on folders from this view. Like mm -hmm. you can't select one of those things and get an action off of it. So then, it's not meant to be a folder tree replacement, just a, a, an alternative view of the folder tree. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow up. Vitaly, if you are okay, I will, you know, just drop me a note when you want to to connect, and uh, it would be great if we can connect offline. Yep, sure. Thank you so so much in advance. Yeah, Vital, I'd love um, to get my hands on that HTML as well. If you'd be agreeable to that, I think um, that's a really neat and something that I think. I know that our probably a service team probably I in fact I looked at a, a view of a project this morning and they had, had to create a custom um a completely custom tree um w because of what customer wanting to use chrome equals off slash match their current implementation yeah and uh the beauty of the uh flow engine because uh the flow can uh travel the tree and pick the folders that you want to display on the menu based on the rules. I mean, you even have icons in this thing. Yeah. Hover over color on top of the flyout menu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you've, you've, how many hours have you put in this thing? This is a, uh, there's a lot here. Uh, not too much. Maybe in the two, two days. The, the, the flow uh, does itself. I mean, it just builds the, HTML on you and you have nice, like you just create a structure, register a menu config, it pulls the page ID and in the uh, truth table, it checks which menu to pull, which flow to run. But basically it's, it's, it's like a template. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's really cool. It makes a lot of sense now that I see it that you could do this with an HTML tile, man. It's really smart. The hardest part was to uh, make it fly uh, over the report. And not be Just stuck into its own thing. Well, it so decision CSS makes a report uh, to be main thing on the page. So it would fly behind the report, but mm. I made it work. Just researching uh, CSS. That is so cool. Yeah, this is, and you know, it's one of those things that decisions is a little bit difficult to to comprehend. It works, everything works great if you have a basically a one dashboard type of perspective. But when you're building a more complex application, you know, with different things that had to be inserted in and out or out. Uh, and I have, you know, unfortunately, I have the, the paradigm of an SPA, 
a single page application where you know I click on a menu, I bring a route uh, onto the front, um, and I you know with decisions that is not that obvious how you, how to do it. Anyway, this is this is good. Yeah, no, cool. Thanks, uh, Vitaly. That's, that's wonderful. I leave you guys to connect, and um, maybe I'll follow up with you, Vitaly, and hunt you down and see if I can steal some of that sweet, sweet HTML. Sure. I'll pay for it. <laughs> cool. All right. Cool. Um, any other questions from anybody today? I don't see any other questions in the queue or hands up. Nothing from my side. I, I think I gave you enough trouble. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Thank you so so much, guys. You bet, Alex. Happy that I could connect you with Vitaly to do all the to help do all the real work. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. And I think tomorrow we've got uh, Andrew, and then Thursday we've got Eric, and then we'll be off for the next two weeks after that, and back again in um, uh, back in January. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. See ya. Ali, I look forward to hearing from you. <laughs>